Hey, it's Kathy and Alex at Mullen Memory. Thanks for watching our video today. Um, today we're going to be talking about a question we've gotten quite frequently recently. And we just want to thank you guys for writing in with your questions. It really means a lot to us and really does help us when we're trying to decide what new content to develop. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the topic you know, that we want to tackle today with this video is how do you use memory techniques in clinical practice? Uh, you know, so we're fourth year medical students now. Um, and you start off in the first two years of medical school kind of doing uh, book work, classroom work, mm -hmm. learning a lot of details about diseases, drugs, and you, you can imagine that you know, memory techniques are going to be more valuable for that uh, you know, side of medicine, and you know, that's really what a lot of our website is devoted to. Um, but then you know, when you transition into the hospital, into the clinic, um, into the clinical setting, you know, how do you use memory techniques? What practical value do they have? And you know, having done a year, you know, over a year now of clinical rotations, you know, we're trying to, to share some of the insights that we've that we've gained from that time um, and, and see what you guys think too. Yeah, so what do you think? Uh, yeah, I mean, so overall, I would definitely say that our use of memory techniques has definitely gone down yeah. uh, a lot, and I think that makes sense. No, I think it definitely makes sense because memory techniques and memory palaces are really there to help you more efficiently gain surface knowledge, right? Um, and so it's there to help you build that foundation, build that framework so that when you're at a deeper level of learning, you can just take the new information you're learning and kind of synthesize it, add it to the existing framework. And hopefully by the time you're a third year in medical school, that's, that's where you're at. Right, and so I think you know while we often fall back on certain images or palaces uh, to recall information, we're not necessarily creating a lot of new palaces or a lot of new images during this year. No, so well, let's jump right into one of the main questions we got, which was in the data acquisition phase. So when you're talking with a patient, when you're reading old records, looking at new lab values, are you creating a memory palace with that information? Right. Well, at least for me, in, in my experience, the answer is no. Yeah. So I'm not here. really creating a new palace or. Uh, creating new images when I'm talking to a patient, I, you know, I just haven't really found that to be very, very useful for me. Yeah, me neither. I, I, it's because I don't want to remember that information long term. There's no point in me creating a, a framework for that information. Right. I think right? it's, it's just as easy to, to just kind of write notes down, and I actually think it mm -hmm. can be more helpful in the patient interaction. You know, if you're kind of talking to a patient and, and jotting a note or two, they actually might feel more engaged. You know, you're kind of more engaged in that conversation. So I think generally that's that's the way that I do things. Um, I'm not making new palaces per se. Um, what I will say is that, you know, I think it's really important to have memorized, uh, to have really internalized the framework, the structure of, you know, uh, your interaction with the patient. So your, your, your standard H&P structure, history and physical. Um, so, you know, you always start out with the chief complaint and you kind of ask questions, um, you know, geared toward that chief complaint. We use an acronym called Old Cart, so you can yeah. look that up on, you know, on Google, um, you know, just to kind of get the, the character of the... Uh, chief complaint, and then from there you can move on to review of systems. So the you know specific questions, kind of you know checklist questions, you know asking do you have a fever or headache or things like that. And I actually do use a body palace to kind of guide my questions there. Um, so you know I'll, I'll start kind of up here. <laughs> this is just the way I've done it, and I'll ask you know any kind of headache or dizziness or passing out here, and then I'll think okay any fever, chills, night sweats here, mm -hmm. um, and then maybe I'll ask some questions about you know, uh, vision, and then move down to, uh, you know, nausea, vomiting, GI, then lungs, then, you know, um, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so I just kind of use those, you know, that, that basic kind of quest, uh, question structure to guide my, to, to guide my interviewing. Uh, and then from there, you can move on to those standard questions, you know, any allergies, medications, past medical history, past surgical history, family history, yeah. um, social history, uh, and then moving on to the physical. So I think memorizing that basic structure and, you know, being able to kind of go through that very effortlessly uh, is important, although I haven't actually used any kind of palace uh, to memorize that information. Well, I think that's great because what you're describing to me is kind of like the very standard checklists that um, are very important when you're talking with a patient, but instead of, you know, pulling out a piece of paper and making sure you have all the details, um, you're able to kind of just converse with the patient while being confident that you're not really missing anything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, you know, kind of going off of the, that data acquisition question, what about patient presentations? You know, yeah. you have to kind of give a patient report or presentation to an attending or to a resident. What do, what do you do for that? Yeah, I think that's easily one of the most scary parts about um, being a third year is, you know, having the confidence to tell the patient's story in a way that's cohesive um, without leaving any details out but not being too long. So um, for me, the answer is actually the same. I really don't use a memory palace for that. Yeah, same. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think that... 
for me, the main reason I don't use a memory palace is because I really want to force myself to kind of understand the meaning behind everything I'm reading and getting um, about the patient. And by doing that, um, I think it really is like a big, important step towards developing, developing expertise in the patient. Yeah. And, you know, one thing I would kind of add to that is, you know, going through the year, you notice that a lot of the residents, especially the upper level residents, the more experienced ones, they seem to just kind of remember all the details yeah. about the patient. Um, and I, I think it's pretty clear that they don't necessarily have better memories. They don't, you know, just kind of know everything, but it's, it's because, you know, because of their experience, uh, everything is much more meaningful to them. And so therefore they remember it better. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's really the goal that you need to strive for is just, you know, having kind of enough of a foundation that everything is just meaningful and therefore memorable. Um, so that's, that's kind of thing, you know, the thing I think we should strive for. That said, um, there are some things that I got, I feel like I've done that have really given me a confidence boost when presenting to an attending or an upper level. So one thing, actually you taught me this, um, I think you read somewhere online, this acronym pad buns. So we do, I do use acronyms when I'm presenting to attendings. And I think that really just lends me some fluency when I'm talking. So I know just exactly what the next words are going to be coming out of my mouth. Um, so pad buns is something that you can use for your surgery clerkship. Um, and it kind of just goes through the things that surgeons really want to know about their patients. So P is for pain. So I might just go through and say, you know, the patient's pain is adequately controlled. A is ambulation. The patient is ambulating now. D is diet. You know, patient is on a clear liquid diet. Will be advancing today. And, I, you know, I think having that acronym in my head gives me, like I said, the fluency and the confidence to kind of go through and talk to an attending, you know, even if I'm super scared inside, um, it just gives me that confidence. Right. And so that goes back to, you know, the kind of review of systems things that I was talking yeah, about, you know, with similar. the body palace, um, with old cards, you know, you kind of have this uh, structure that you've internalized that you can rely on both for gathering information and for presenting the patient. And so I think that's really the easiest way, you know, the, the way that we'd recommend kind of going through. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so, you know, in, in summary, I think all we really, you know, want to say is we haven't really done a whole lot in terms of creating new memory palaces or new images during this year. Our recommendation tends to be really just internalizing a very consistent uh, framework of questions for when you're interacting with a patient or presenting a patient. Um, and you can certainly use acronyms. You know, we've mentioned old carts. We mentioned pad buns. Um, there's body palaces that you can use to help guide your questions. You know, you talk about these different things and then the different systems as you move down the body. Um, I think those are very helpful. Um, but that's just kind of been the way that we've used uh, memory techniques uh, this year yeah. as clinical students. So, you know, we'll see how that changes once we become interns and residents and, um, you know, real physicians. But, you um, Hope that helps you and your clerkships. And if you have any suggestions, we'd love to hear Absolutely. what you do um, on your clinical rotation.